Hey everybody, I'm Robert and I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. Today we are talking about the GR Yaris from Toyota. It's a car that I actually picked up and bought this week and it's something I'm really excited about. First of all though, I've got today the Uno Dash up on the wall. This is a full carbon fiber bike. As you can see, no electrics. So this is a little bit different from what you've been seeing on the wall. Some of you guys have been giving me a hard time about riding an e-bike. There's a very good reason for it. We're gonna talk about that later in the year. But today I took this out for its first big ride, or, or I should say for me, big ride. And um, at the end of the video, we're gonna talk about how that kicked my ass because I don't want to bore the people that are here for the Toyota. So those of you that are interested in all the topics that we talk about here, we'll talk about this a little bit more at the end. But for now, the topic is, has the Yaris GR, has the GR Yaris, the Yaris GR, M3 BMW, BMW M3, someone was giving me a little bit of a hard time on Instagram, relax guys. I might call it a Yaris GR sometimes. It's a GR Yaris. It even says so right there on the car, on the back of the car, that's fine. If I say Yaris GR, I mean GR Yaris. But has the GR Yaris brought the car community together? Kind of an interesting question, isn't it? I give social media influencers, as we've been having a fun time uh, poke, uh, poking at and everything like that, I give them a hard time for overhyping things, maybe getting paid to overhype things. Maybe a manufacturer says, hey, do you wanna come and drive our car? Here are the, thing, the talking points. Here's how much power we have. Here's how much downforce we have. Here's how much better this car is than the last one we produced. Here's how much better it is than the competition. Those influencers take that and they spew it out. We eat it up, we love it. And for me, I am very critical of that. I don't like that. And I'm very vocal of that. I think that if you like a car, you should announce that you like it. You should tell why you like it and it shouldn't be written off of a script. And on day one, when Toyota says, please come drive this car, 35 social media personalities, journalists, magazine articles, et cetera, should not say the same exact things about why this car is good. And it looks very scripted. It looks very planned and it's not very convincing to somebody like me. At the same time, I've been watching the development of this car right here. And I've been thinking this might be a car that I want to get. This might be a car that's going to excite me. So, Along the way, we knew that we were going to be getting one for Apex. We knew that we were going to be putting it into the rental fleet. And when I say rental fleet, we rent cars on the Nürburgring so that you guys can enjoy different types of cars. And, and obviously it's a business for us. It's not my main business. So it's not a business that I'm thinking I'm going to buy this car right here, put it in the rental fleet, and I'm going to make millions of euro from it. It's not going to happen. We're going to modify this car. We're going to do a lot of things. There's going to be a good, a good investment when you're talking about the car and the mods versus the income that's going to come from the car. So I went and, and actually uh, did some videos with Misha. We knew we were getting a car. I, I hadn't selected one yet. I hadn't found one yet. And I said, I'm going to get this car, but I'm probably going to wait till 2021 because it's the end of the year at the Nürburgring. We just don't need another car to look at where we're we going to store it for winter. We only have a couple more weekends left. We just, it's just not necessary to bring all of this to the table this year. Maybe just set the money aside. Let's just wait until next year and we'll get the car. Well, I started seeing the excitement that the, the, in the comment sections on Misha's videos, I said, you know what? I better just go get one. So I went out this week and I bought one on Tuesday. I was actually due to drive, uh, drive uh, out of the area at 11 o'clock and instead we found one that was just 20 minutes away from us and instead of leaving on time i went and drove test drove the car bought it there on the spot and the next day we had the car um it was kind of interesting because tom went with me we did a test drive and we had a blast in the car the car was immediately you got in and the first impression that you had was quality alcantara uh, material on the doors and the seats you had really nice wrapped steering wheel the look of the car was pretty cool from the front um, that was the first thing that I saw of it. And I said, you know what, this, this thing's pretty badass. And the first thing I said, as we rolled out of the parking lot, I said, man, you know what, Tom, I don't know if I want to let this go in the rental fleet. This car is really cool. I like it. And at that point I was already starting to drive away and I could feel how tight the drivetrain felt, how re solid it felt. You brought out the clutch and everything started rolling without any vibrations, without any motion. It was just very, very quality. You could tell that the car was going to work even just rolling through the parking lot. It had a substantial feel to it. And that's something that you don't always get in this segment of cars. So that night I was really excited about it. And I made a post on Facebook in one of the Nürburgring groups. I said, Hey guys, this is a car that we now have available for rent. I'm going to, to put this out here that you guys can rent it. And 
I was very reluctant to put it in the rental fleet. This is something that to me is a true test of uh, the quality of our cars is if I feel like it's a car that I want to jump in, I think then it's going to be a good car for you guys, but it gives me a little heartache to do so. However, I've come to terms with it and it's available. One of the guys on there immediately came in and said, Robert, you are constantly uh, blasting influencers for overhyping things that aren't necessary. And here you are doing the same exact thing. I said, wait a minute, how am I doing the same exact thing? He said, well, we can all tell that you're full of shit because you have a fleet of cars that range from or access to cars from Ferrari to McLaren to Porsche, all these race prep BMWs and things like that. And nobody with those fleet of cars would be this excited for a GR Yaris. Therefore, Robert, you are simply trying to overhype this so that people give you money to rent it on the Nurburgring. And I thought that that was really interesting because obviously that person knows enough about me to know that I'm anti-influencing and anti-spewing out just nonsense to, to sell and promote a brand, but he's not in tune enough to understand that I take a Polo GTI out on certain days and leave the GT2 RS in the barn. I take a Toyota GT86 out and leave the Shermer M4 VLN car in the barn. I love all cars. So it started making me think about the messages that I've gotten in the last two weeks, okay? In the last two weeks, I've had messages from 675 LT owners group. Robert, you didn't tell us that we got, that you were getting one of these, that's really cool. Four of us here in the group have ours on order and we're eagerly awaiting them. Okay, that's 675 LT owners group. I've got people who are running Super Trofeo race cars messaging me, Robert, I've got one coming, it's gonna be here in January, I'm so excited for this car. I've got somebody that owns a Speedtail who is going on and telling me about all the intricacies of the Speedtail, positive and negative, and said, and I just saw that you're getting a Yaris GR. I'm getting one as well. I can't wait for it to get here. What are your first impressions of it? How did it feel when you drove it? What was it like with shifting? How does it work with heel toe and everything like that? So now we've got 675 owners. We've got GT2 owners that are messaging me with the same questions. I'm in a GT2 group and same thing. I'm in the Pista group in, in, on, a, on a Facebook uh, Pista group and they're messaging me asking how the Yaris GR is. I've got customers who have Senna's, LaFerrari's, when I say customers, customers of these brands, and they're all messaging me, asking my impressions of the Yaris GR. So all of a sudden I had to stop and think, wait a minute, we have people from groups that are in polos and fiestas. We have people that are in groups all the way up into hypercars and they're comparing this car to their car and what they have. And everybody's focused on the GR Yaris right now and how exciting it is how neat it is to see such a car. So it did make me think that we actually are seeing the entire car community come together and get on one playing field where you've got hypercar owners and guys that are dreaming of getting maybe their first sports car all going for the same car. And that's, I think in this day and age, very, very rare. And I think that Toyota should be proud of themselves for actually having put together a package that so many, such a wide range of people are interested in. If a group of guys with 675 LTs, which is arguably one of the best track cars that have come out in the last, I don't know, 10 years in terms of the function of the car, the feedback of the car, the excitement of the car, the feel that it gives you, and they're all looking for this. If you've got guys with, uh, one guy was talking to me, he has a, a Fiesta ST that he's looking to upgrade, and he called it an upgrade to go into this car. And these guys are all coming after one vehicle. I think that's pretty damn cool. Why is the, 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 the Yaris such a special car? Well, this day and age when a lot of racing series require um, um, the, the, you to enter, let's say I'm Toyota and I wanna enter into the WRC uh, uh, racing series and I wanna build a rally car. They're going to require that I take one of my vehicles that's already in production. And part of that is that they have to build 25,000 of these cars. And Toyota said, well, at, at the original stages, they said, well, if we're going to build a car, it needs to be the best car. If we're gonna race in WRC, we need to have the best car. We need to have something that works, something that functions and something that's exciting. So they came up with the concept to build the GR Yaris as the sole purpose of racing it in the WRC. However, they need to build 25,000 of them and they need to sell it to the public. So we ended up getting a car 
that has the performance differential, which is basically an all wheel drive system that has a differential front and rear. And it has the ability to control how much power goes to the front and rear differentials. I think it's stock 60, 40 to front wheel base uh, bias uh, or standard. And then you've got a uh, track mode, which is 50, 50 bias. And that's supposed to give you the best balance. That's going to be great for coming out of the turn and keeping a nice balance. And then it gives a sport bias, which has a uh, 30% front, 70% rear. So you can come out of the turns and you can actually power slide out of the turn and drive the car the way that you want. So that's something that they wanted in the rally cars. So that's something that we get. So Toyota says we're going to build 25,000 of these. We're going to make it the best road car that we can so that it can be perfect for us in our WRC rally racing. The only problem that I would say Toyota has from this or that the world has from this, the, us car enthusiasts are still getting what we got out of it is due to COVID regulations or, or just the entire COVID situation. They've decided to continue running their old rally car for one more year because I think in the future WRC is going to have certain in 2022 certain uh, hybrid rules and things like that. So it means that this this race car will never be produced and never run as it stands right now. However, us as the car enthusiasts, we still get the benefit of having this rally inspired car, 25,000 units at our hands at our disposal. So. With that, we are all looking at it saying, okay, we've got a car manufacturer who has built the perfect little toy for us to go out and have fun in. And, and it's brought an entire group of people together. See, you've got people that, that go and you buy a Ford Mustang. And if you go in the Ford Mustang community, they're like, Haha, look at that guy with this Corvette. I have a car that's faster than a Corvette, but I've paid 20,000 less than him, right? Then the Corvette guy goes, yeah, but you can't, let's meet at the turns, right? When you get to the turns, it's all over. It's not, it's not going to work, right? And so then they're bad mouthing the, the Ford guys. Then the Corvette guys are like, ha, look at this guy with his, with his uh, Porsche Turbo, right? I'm faster than him around a racetrack with a Porsche Turbo because I've got a Corvette and I've got more power or, or better suspension setup or whatever it may be. And now they're better than the Porsche Turbo. Now with the new mid-engine Corvette, the Porsche guys I see are, are going after McLaren and going after Ferrari and going after these brands. And they're saying, look at this for a quarter of the money or a third of the money. I'm almost as fast as a McLaren. I'm almost as fast as a Pista. I'm almost as fast as this. And then you go in the McLaren form and they say, look at this guy. They've got a cute Corvette. It's got terrible interior, right? And it's, it's just, it's garbage and it's, it's not that great. It's not well put together. What's the reliability going to be like? What does it look like when you roll up to Harrods? Is it, do you get the same attention? And this goes on and on and on. And next thing you know, you're comparing a, a Valkyrie to, I don't know, a, a, a Senna, right? And, and all of this is what the car community does, except for with the GR Yaris. As of late, every one of these groups have all looked at this and said, hey, this is pretty cool. Now, of course, you're going to have people that don't like the car. You're going to have people that say, uh, yeah, it's just not for me. I don't like the style of it. It's ugly, blah, blah, blah. But I think we need to take it for what it is. What is the GR Yaris? It's a 1280 kilogram car. This thing is as light as a 675 LT Spider. Okay, a lot less power, a lot, you know, a lot, a lot of differences, but it's as light as a 675 LT Coupe Spider, whatever. It's got 261 horsepower. It's got all wheel drive. From the factory with ours, we have the performance kit. So we've got the upgraded uh, uh, differentials. Uh, so it goes from a, a basically an E diff up to a, a mechanical diff, but you also get a set of brakes that will work and you won't need to change them. I don't foresee needing to go to a big brake kit because this brake system is going to be more than sufficient for what we have. You've got ducting that actually brings fresh air into the wheel wells. It doesn't connect up to the caliper for proper cooling, but it actually is bringing ducting in. You've got a lot of technology in this car and a, there's a lot of value to it. Things that I don't like about the car are the seating position is definitely too high. And I don't like the fact, what else didn't I like, Tom? I like the seating position was too high. Oh, the sound. The sound of the car is okay, but a lot of it's piped in. You know, that's a big complaint of mine with the AMG GT Black Series. I think that we're at a certain level with them that it's embarrassing to pump in sound through the speakers. But in this car, maybe it can be forgiven. It's a three cylinder. I think it's going to be a very reliable motor. Maybe we can put an exhaust on it to tune it up and get it more exciting. So where does it leave us? It leaves us at a point that Toyota has built a car 
that is actually exciting, fun to drive, the feedback, the steering input. Okay, the steering input could be a little bit better, but it's not bad. I've definitely driven worse. Some of the new BMWs I think are, are, are still lacking even in comparison to this car. But for the price point, I paid somewhere around 35,000 euro for this car. For the price point, I've not driven a car that's more exciting. You know that I love the Polo GTIs. I think that this edges it out and this is uh, priced in a very, I would say within a thousand euro of the price of a Polo GTI. Um, so it leaves us at a point where Toyota has built a car that has the entire world talking about it. I say the entire car world talking about it. 95% um, of what I see is positive about it. This is on the heels of Toyota saying, okay, we're building a new Supra. Um, you know what my thoughts are on the Supra, not 100% great, but they brought a car to the table that was very exciting and created a lot of hype. They again have created the car of the year in the GR Yaris and created hype and created excitement and brought their name to the front of the media discussions in terms of the car world. The next thing we know is that they're wanting to build a hyper car that's uh, gonna again be a street model so that they are homologated into the uh, WC and they can run Le Mans with, with their car. And I am very excited to see Toyota doing this. If, you, if all of a sudden Toyota is building a GR Yaris, a Supra, which I think is starting to get the rear cradle under control and things like that, and then a hypercar, look at the wide range of cars that they're building. And they're doing it in conjunction with minivans and pickup trucks and all these different things. I think that's a very nice broadband for one company to be providing. And if they can do it with a certain level of excitement and a certain level of passion that they did with the, with the GR Yaris, I'm all for it. I definitely, this type of mentality makes me a Toyota fan in that regard. It also shines some light on what some of these other companies should do. You know, I do not like the BMW marketing as of late. I think that their grills are ugly. I think that the way that they responded to it, calling their fans boomers and all these things, spend less time calling your, 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 your buyers and your, your clients boomers and insulting them, spend more time building badass cars that people get, can get behind and get excited about. Make your cars lighter. Don't add 150 kilos and hide it behind an ugly grill. So few people are talking about the increased weight of a BMW because it's so ugly. But we should. We should be talking about the increased weight of a BMW. Our F80 M3 Taxi is heavy, fully loaded. It's two tons. I can't imagine doing this now to the next generation of M3 and having it weigh 2.2 tons just with, with passengers getting out the gate. Start thinking about what these car manufacturers should be doing. What do you guys want to see out of car manufacturers? What's your dream car? I didn't necessarily think that in 2020 with what I see as a decline in some of the German car manufacturers, I wasn't expecting a car that's as cool as this and as neat as this to come out. Do you guys agree with that? What do you think? What do you think of the GR Yaris? What do you think of the whole concept from Super being hyped, from GR being hyped, uh, the Yaris, and then even this hypercar that's coming out? What do you guys think of that? Is it, is it cool? Do you think that this has maybe brought the car community together in a way? Do you think it's going to bring some of the social divides between uh, shitbox, sports car, super sports car, supercars, and, and hypercars? Do you think it's going to bring some of it out of the way and maybe get some people that may never be, uh, uh, I would say, interacting in social groups and Facebook groups and WhatsApp groups? Do you think it's going to bring a broad range of people together? I have already seen it start to happen, but I'm definitely curious to, to know what you guys think. Anyhow, that's it on the Yaris, the GR Yaris topic. Let's talk about this bad boy. Uh, this bike is completely carbon fiber. A lot of you know that I've been riding the, uh, the Grape mountain bike for, um, I guess, about a year now, and it really has helped me get, uh, get in shape and, and, and start getting some endurance back. I used to run a lot, and it's something I really enjoyed doing, and I had good cardio, but... Um, uh, the, and, and the grape has been able to allow me, the e-bike has been able to allow me to go longer distant rides without having to stop and then come back home. So it's been letting me get up hills and things like that. And this bike right here, I decided, okay, it's time for me to go away from a, um, what would you say, away from an e-bike, not away from it, but start pushing myself now without the, without the, um, without the e-assist. And so I went online, I did a lot of research. I said, okay, I want to get this, I want to get this bike. Why? Okay, do we need a full visual carbon fiber bike? No, but we probably also don't need wheel discs on the GT2 RSMR either. So for me, this was just a badass bike. It was designed to owner the company as a, a downhill or was a downhill racer professional level. And 
it just stood out to me as a really cool looking frame and a really cool looking bike, a bike that I'll probably use 4% of the quality on. But what I liked about it was that I'm not the lightest. I'm right now at about 90 kilograms. Um, so that's just around 200 pounds. And so I knew that for me, if I can save five or 10 kilos on a bike, that's going to help me as I'm going up hills. So today was the first day that I said, okay, I'm going to go for this. I rode up the hill out of our town. That's about a 400 meter climb. Um, so what's that about 1600 feet somewhere in that ballpark. And it definitely kicked my ass, but I didn't stop once. I didn't have to, I didn't have to, uh, I didn't have to put my feet down anywhere, but I, it was, it was definitely hard work. So, um, I can say from my standpoint is working with the e-bike had got me to the point that the first time I got on this bike, I was actually able to do a 400 meter climb. I think it was about a 10% uh, grade is what that is, what that climb is out of town. So I was able to do a four, uh, uh, 400 meters over 10% grade to get out of town on the bike for, for my first try. Uh, I would, wouldn't say it was fast. It took me 42 minutes to get up there on the e-bike. I can do it in under 20. So <laughs> it definitely was a big difference, but I made it and I got there. The cool thing with this bike being that it's all carbon fiber is I'm going to actually, uh, work out a design to paint it, to match the GT2 RSMR. So we're going to talk about that in the next video. I'm going to set the, the bike by the car and, and start looking at how we can lay it out with white and gold and everything like that to actually make it match the car. Because I think that um, part of a bike like this is uh, to someone like me, that's a car guy that loves tech. I love, you know, having the best suspension, the best tires, the best brakes and everything on the car. And I, I love pushing those cars on the track, but I think that I can also get some of that excitement out of a bike. We're going to go with the lightest weight, um, uh, drivetrain that we can. I'm going to get some lightweight pedals for it. So this isn't actually my bike. This is a bike that, that was very kindly sent to me by the company so that I could test it and actually look at it for the custom paint work we want to do. But let me know if you guys have any questions about the Uno Dash. This is something I'm really, really excited. I took it out of the box and I just lifted it up with one hand and I was like, okay, I think I can, I think I can ride this. You know? <laughs> um, but yeah, I think a lot of you guys that were criticizing me for using the e-bike had missed the point that the e-bike, if you're not lazy and you push yourself, you can get a very good workout on it. I can tell you that today, me riding up the hill on this, my heart rate was the same as it was when I'm on the e-bike. The only difference was that my heart rate was at that point for 45 minutes, where on the e-bike it would have only been 17 or 18 minutes. So I, I had the endurance built up from riding the e-bike. Um, what I would have done with the e-bike is usually done that hill up, down, up, down. I could have done it three times. Um, and so I was able to get the endurance training with the e-bike, but I was also able to be encouraged to go further, go see more things. Um, you know, when you're in Italy, you can ride along the coast and go to all these different towns and cool stuff like that. At the Nürburgring, I ride my bike around the track one time. Um, I, I ride it if I'm going to different shops or different places like that. And with the e-bike, you're able to see more things and it keeps your interest. It keeps you excited as opposed to just, oh gosh, I can only make it up a quarter way up the hill. I guess I'll go home now. So it does, it keeps your interest in, and makes the training a little bit more enjoyable, I guess. And eventually you can start weaning from needing the, the E, the E assist. Um, and it makes it something that, yeah, today when I got to the top of that hill, I was definitely proud. I was like, cool, I made it, you know, um, maybe dreading doing it again tomorrow, but I was definitely excited to do it. And the cool thing is now I'm definitely a little bit tired from that ride, but tonight I'll go out with my wife and we'll both ride our e-bikes and we'll do even more on the e-bikes. And I think that a combination between the e-bike and the normal mountain bike is going to make my training go even further to where I can be more fit and ride further. So hope that makes a little bit of sense why I like the e-bike, how I think it fits and obviously how at some point our goal still is being able to ride something like this uh, up many hills and, and over a long distance without any stress. But anyways, thank you guys for all of the comments um, that the last video that we did with the 458 uh, or 488 Pista sale that the, uh, the feedback you guys have given and the comments you've given have been great. Please don't forget to drop some comments below. Any ideas you guys have for a video, any questions that you may have about this video, about the bikes, about, I don't know, some brand deals that you know that I need to get, maybe some companies I need to message so they can uh, kindly not give me any brand deals. <laughs> but um, yeah, I hope you guys are having a great weekend. Let me know everything you want to know down below this channel. Basically, all of the content is derived based on your comments, on your ideas. And uh, I look forward to sharing more of my ideas with you guys. We'll catch you later.